Hi, welcome to the Jaffa programming tutorial. Um, what we're looking at is graphi graphical user interfaces and what we're using action looseness. And the program we're using, I'm going to simplify it because if I run the program, right, I've added, I've added the panels, panels, buttons, added action listener to the, the buttons, everything's okay. Added a menu bar the program that was added action listener to a menu item that was okay. Added the toolbar, added a button and added an action listener and then I got a problem. Um, some things are thread um, unsafe and so what was happening is every time you do an action, every time you do a, a action listener that's a separate program that's working in the background waiting for an effect to happen and so if you attach it to a button and it's waiting for you to click that button so when you click that button it activates an event sends it to action event to the action performed and whatever codes in here will be executed and this is why we've got if statements so that we can select what action event is actually taking place so that we can um, do the appropriate code. Now, we could actually have a separate action listener and listener for each component, but that's expensive. So what we've done is we created a J button, type button, get source, and then we've done the J menu item and get source. And this has created problems. So there's a better way of doing it instead of being specific with what kind of object what we can do is we can use say, the muffin daddy of all objects class and that's object this is the object class is inherited by all objects that you create all classes that you create and um, use it and so what we can do is we can be a little bit clever and just test for an object and then compare that object for the type of object um, the type of object that may have um, fired the event and so I'm going to take this away and we'll, we'll do this straight under it so you can see the difference I'm going to object and we'll call it B and we'll, we'll call it C plus B has been used equals and it's got to be cast to object and then it's e dot get source so this is this is the source that fired the the event and so we need to tell what button was it what menu was it what toolbar button was it, what if it was, we need to know so we can run the, the correct code. And so you can see the difference here. These are two different objects. That's a J menu item object, J button object. And this is a mummy and daddy of them. Both of these inherit this. So all objects are of object class. And so we can use that. I'm going to take this away. Right, and so we go object is going to be C and it's going to be of the type of the, the object that fired the event is going to come in here it's this get source is going to return it it's going to be cast into the object class and C is going to, going to become the class that fired the event so we can compare C with the object that we wanted to fire an event so we've got 10 different objects then we'll compare those 10 different objects with C and when that compare becomes true that if statement will be executed and the code within it will be executed but the code within the if statements that do not um, return true the condition true they will not be executed and so we can have one action performed for many different um, components and so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this away that's the other way we've done it was get action command. But we, I think either we're getting really stupid or we're getting a little bit more sophisticated.
ballistic radio and not too sure. And so, so this will, when we fire this button, um, this code will be executed, shall stay. And I'm going to simplify the code sim again, but first I'm going to test this. And so, it's this button here. And so, if I click this button, Charles T was executed. If I click this one, nothing happens because that's the only one we've got attached to the action performed. Right. So I'm going to get rid of all the panels. So what we've got now is we've got a menu bar, we've got a frame, we've got the menu bar attached to the frame, we've got um, all these buttons attached to the, the toolbar, but the toolbar is not connected to the frame yet. And so there's going to be a lesson here for toolbars as well. You, for, for a toolbar to, to work it's better to connect it to a border rail manager and I'll show you why. Um, I'm going to connect it to a, a panel. I'm going to create a panel, J panel. Pan equals new J panel. It's a capital P. So we've created a panel. And what we're going to do with this panel is we're going to add toolbar to it. So it's pan dot add and we're going to add pan to it. Now we've got this panel to the frame. Well this has got to be after we, we add it. This has got to be here because we've just added all the buttons here and, and we've already added um, the toolbar to the frame. It's better to keep it in a sequential order, keep everything right. And so now we're going to add the panel to the frame, f dot add pan, and then it's... So if You'll see that this is wrong because the default for panel is is throw um, layout, and the ideal one for a toolbar is um, border layout. Right, we've got an error. It's here. Oh, sorry, it should be TB. All right, I've added panel to panel. It's TB with toolbar. So what you'll find is it's jumping straight back into the centre. Instead of staying there, it jumps into the centre. And it's jumped up to the top. That's because it's throw railed. Now, we're going to change it to um, border railed. And the way to do this, the quickest way to do to change a panel is pan dot set layout manager layout and you return the manager. The manager we're going to do is border layout. The, the easiest way is to just do the new command and the constructor of border layout. Because it's a constructor, it's got um, brackets. So that's us changed from the default throw, throw the out to border the out. 
And so if we save and run the program, you'll see the difference. Now, if I move this here, you'll see it stayed here. If I moved this here, you'll see it stays here. And if I move this here, you'll see that it stayed there. And so, so it's doing what it's supposed to do. And the reason why it's doing it is because we've got an off see that's a north and we've got a east we've got a south and we've got a west and it's using these parts of the body rail to support the toolbar and so if we click this see what happens Charles T is printed right so so that's what I'm going to take the T away right and now we've used it we can now we can access the the J menu item and just by print is the name it's used for that object. So if we go up see this is if we go up print equals new J menu item and so if we come down we can type out um, menu And so if I click this it should be Charles. Right? Click it again just to show you. Now go to file, print name. Now it's Fred safe just by the way we we executed it. And so if that was a button we wouldn't have to create a, a cast it as a button. Um, we cast it as an object and we would test it, C would be tested against the name of the button and so if we made an instance of button called JB it would be if C is equal to JB and then it, if it was then it would do the code it's supposed to do for that button so that's probably the best way to do it that I know um, I'm not too sure but remember it's, a, it's there's many and many different ways of doing things. Um, sometimes, sometimes it can seem more complicated when it is. It's not as complicated and it's more simple. Um, this part here, you really, it's really getting, getting you to know um, objects, and it's actually an object oriented. Everything's a class. Everything's an object. This is a mummy and daddy of all objects, and that's why we're using it. So, again, thank you for your time. I hope that's helped.